Hello, hope you're all doing well. So we're going to the shed today and I'm going to show you just a really quick way to paint up the Untamed Beasts from the Warcry basic set. So nice, quick, easy way just to get a good tabletop standard warband on the table and playing some games. Right, let's head inside and see what we can Hey, so we've had a bit of a shift around in the shed to give you this white background -y thingy. So hopefully you can see the model a little bit more clearly now, rather than focusing on the, the brick wall, which is probably for the best. Now, what we've got here is a prey taker with a fanged axe from the Warcry basic set. Now, initially, you'd be really forgiven for thinking that these are going to be a bit boring to paint because it's just 50 shades of brown. You know, the, the skin is brown, the weapons are brown, you know, the... Um, the fur is brown, and you've, you might feel it's, oh, it's going to be boring, but I'm going to show you how you can paint it so it's quick, so you can get this onto the tabletop and get playing with it, and also to make this look really, really nice. So there are a couple of tricks and a couple of um, thingamajigs I'm going to show you that are going to make this just stand out and just make it ping a little bit, you know? Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get on some Darko Flesh onto the, well, the flesh. So Darko Flesh, as you've probably gathered from watching some of my other videos, is one of my favourite contrast paints. Because, well, you know, flesh is something that is very tricky to do. You know, get it wrong and it ends up just right in the uncanny valley. But if you can get it right with just something as easy as this, then it's just out of a bottle you get a good flesh tone. Now in particular, I like Darko flesh for things like this Prey Taker because as you can see he's massively muscled, so this just lets you have something that will just sit into all the recesses of the, of the rippling biceps etc. And it just highlights that very, very well. And it just, it complements the sculpting. You can see there you've got the uh, it's rippling abs. There we go. There we go. So that just sits really, really nicely. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of the Darko flesh onto this guy. And then after that, we're going to put on a bit of skeleton horde just on all the bony bits. Okay, that's looking good. Now, we've got skeleton horde which I'm just going to slap onto these, uh, these skulls on the base here. Now, Skeleton Horde, it's not got a terribly heavy pigment to it. So, don't be stingy with it, that's what I'm saying. You know? Alright, so just get that on there. There we go. So stick that on. Now, you can see here, there's these little barbs coming out of the, the leather leg wraps that he's got on. So, I'm going to do them. Now, you're going to get some paint over the leg wraps. Don't worry. That's why we're working light to dark. Because any of that spill over onto the leg wraps, like this bit here, that's just going to get covered up really easily with the... Um, yeah, same for his arm wraps here. That's going to get covered up really easily by the, um, the snake bite leather that we're going to do for the leathery bits. So, make sure you get all of the... All of the bone bits. So what you want to watch out for are the, well, the bits on his shins and forearms, the little amulets he's got on his belt here, and also most importantly his weapon. That's what I love about the Untamed Beasts. They've uh, they've decided, you know what, we're going to leave the realm of beasts and we're going to have a crack at the old uh, eight points. You know, fight whatever we come across. And yes, I know they've got weapons made of steel and we're using you know, bits of old bones that we found lying around the place. But you know what, lads? I've got a good feeling about this. Yeah, they've, they've easily got the best, best background fluff of any Warcry warband. And I include the Unmade in that. And I love the Unmade. Anyway, so I'm banging on. Right, so I'm going to get the rest of the, the bone done in Skeleton Horde. And then after that... We're going to have a look at that, uh, that fur on his back. There we go, and you can see that's come together now. Okay, so for this next bit, 
we've got some black templar contrast paint and we're just going to do the the fur here now black templar is a wonderfully made black and i've got to admit i'm a bit of a convert to it i usually just used um abaddon black for everything black but this is a really really nice shade of black and the reason why i'm, I'm loving abaddon black for the for the untamed beasts is because if you look at the fur um, it sits into the recesses and then it leaves the top kind of a very, very dark grey. Uh, there's a little amulet on the back there, I hope you can see that. Um, and we'll paint that gold at the end, but, you know, for the time being it's fine just to go in contrast, pick it out again later. Please do remind me if I don't, by the way. Um, now, this sits really, really nicely into the recesses of the, the fur mantle on his back. And what this does as well, is it just very, very nicely breaks up the model a bit. So rather than having brown on brown on brown on brown, you've just got this, this grey here on the top, just to, just to give it a little bit of extra, extra colour. Which I for one think is rather charming. Right, so I'm going to finish this pelt, and then after that we've got our final contrast paint, which is going to be snake bite leather, which we're going to put on the loincloth, the wrist guards, and the weapon guard. Oh, I tell lies, sorry, there's also a bit of Nasdug yellow, which we're going to use in some places, but I won't ruin that. Right, let's get this sorted. Okay, so now it is time for snakebite leather, which is, again, you've probably gathered this is my absolute favourite contrast paint. You know, now with snakebite leather, we need to be a little bit careful here, um, just because it's a very dominant colour, so if we spill any over, it's going to be tricky. Now, tricky bit here. You can see with the leg wraps, there's a little bit of darko flesh on the edge there. So if you, if you go over, it's not the end of the world. Because you say these models are a bit, you know, 50 shades of brown. But try to try to stick in the lines if you can. Oh god, look, the black templars leaked there. But not a problem. Um, if you notice some of the contrast paint has leaked, while it's still wet, what you can do is just use a brush and some water. You can just tidy it up like that, or a little bit of tissue. Yes, I'm just going to try and tidy that up a bit. Get that black templar out of there. Okay, so. If that doesn't work, use a dry brush to kind of soak up some of the pigmentation. And if that doesn't work, like this hasn't, then not a problem at all. I'm going to touch that up with some grey here, and then I'm going to blend it back in. But for the time being, let's finish the rest of the snake bite leather. So snake bite leather on the back here, like that. And you can see it goes really, really nicely here, both in the, the detailed surfaces, like the back of the leg wraps, and also on the back of the, the loin cloth. Now it doesn't make that much a difference that the loincloth has blended a bit with the um, uh, with the black templar from the fur, because that just means it's a slightly different shade of brown. So it'll give a bit of variety to it. So occasionally things like this will crop up when you're painting. Don't worry about it, embrace it. So I'm going to finish the rest of the snake bite leather and touch up that leg, and I'll be back in a Okay, so the leg turned out okay. You know, not too bad. Um, it obviously wasn't helped by having some black templar spilt on it, but you know what, we just had to roll with it and you know, it turned out alright. Now, here's where we can just jazz it up a little bit, you know, just to give it a little bit of a nice push. I mean, this guy's looking pretty good already. What we're going to do is we're going to use this stuff, Nasdug Yellow. Now, I'm going to put Nasdug Yellow on the belt around his waist. Now, because if you think about it from a, a background point of view, you know, these guys, they, they don't have you know, professional tanners. It's basically you kill the animal, leave it out, and just let nature kind of do its job. Now that's spilt a little bit over that leg again. It seems his left leg is just bloody cursed. Right, so I'm just going to give it a quick blow. <sighs> okay, there you go. I've been able to blow the, the worst of it off. Now, the other thing that you can do with Nasdaq Yellow here is, you can see with his fanged axe, you just put 
a little bit of Nasdaq yellow on the teeth because that just helps the teeth to stand out a little bit and just give it that extra kind of pop and because you know the the teeth would probably have been exposed for a few years before this predator whatever the hell it was was eventually taken down and eaten by this guy so his teeth might be yellow and horrible and and it just makes the weapon pop a little bit just going to run that along there on the back spike of the axe and then finally you can see on the back you've got these uh, these claws here on the pelt which is a nice touch so I'm just going to give it nice yellowed claws so yeah, and that'll dry quite nicely right I'm going to try and repair this leg again and then after that we've just got the metallics to do a little bit of ink on the metallics and then we can move on to the base all right so that's now really coming together now so i think he's looking pretty damn good now i'm just going to stick some lead belcher just on his helmet again this is a little bit of a fiddly bit because i really don't want to take it on the horns and then i'm also going to do his massive belt buckle here with the untamed beast symbol on and again if a little bit of brown runoff comes into that it doesn't matter so we're going to be inking the hell out of it in just a second and also there's a bit of chain mail on the loincloth which i'm going to take care of as well okay i'm going to touch that up and then we'll be back just to do the finishing touches right so the metallics so the helmet's done uh, there's a little talisman symbol on his back here which i've just done in gold just to help it stand out and the loincloth's done, so now just with some strong tone or some ink, I'm just going to slap that on there. And you do not have to worry about going over other areas at all with this strong tone, because basically everything is brown. So that's fine, just, just basically slap that on. Right, so I'm happy with this, this is good tabletop standard. It's tabletop standard, don't know about good, I'll let you be the judge of that. So the last thing I want to show you how to do is just how to do a nice base and how to just pull the model together a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do, it's just three nice easy steps, is we've got some Astrogranite Debris, which is a technical paint, uh, basing paint by Games Workshop, and just get a load on your brush and then just water it down just a little bit. And then with an old tatty brush, just spread that all over the base. Okay, so the astrogranite debris has now dried. And now it's time to put on some Valhallen Blizzard. Which, if you remember from previous video, Valhallen Blizzard is basically the best artificial snow there is. Okay, you can make your own, where it's with equal parts, um, PVA glue, white acrylic, and sand. You know, if you'd have... If you'd too stingy to buy a pot. It's always nice to be able to make your own, but I'm just being lazy, so I'm just going to take it straight from the pot. Now, the, the reason why I'm using a lolly stick um, is going to become apparent. Now, I haven't just run out of brushes, but the reason why I'm using that is because you wipe it on like that, using the stick, and then just kind of pat it down. So you use the lolly stick as a way to just pat it down like that, and you'll find that you might get a bit of a better result just with a um, this is a sharpened solero stick i think just by patting it down like that you get quite a decent result now we're not going for full snow coverage so this is representing a kind of churned up snow yeah so just kind of pat it down like that Maybe a smidgen more at the back. That was a tiny bit clinging to the loincloth there. Get off. Get off. Get on the floor, Snow. That's where you belong. Okay, so once we've got the snow dry, then we're going to do the final stage, which, let's face it, is the most fun. And it's going to be some time for some blood for the blood god. Now it's time for blood for the blood god. So... Don't be stingy with it. Get a nice big dollop on your brush, just like that. Now, the trick is, with Blood for the Blood God, is use an old tatty brush. 
and what we're going to start off doing is a couple of drops on the snow like that. And the lovely thing about Blood for the Blood God and Valhalla and Blizzard is they work really nicely together. So we're just gonna, you can see that that looks like perfect blood on snow. And you can see here where it's uh, kind of falling through and spreading through the snow. It's, it's acting like blood on snow. You know, um, go watch a nature documentary of some wolves bringing down a caribou, you know, if you need a, a reference for blood on snow. Then what you do with your old tatty brush is just, you know, just flick it on. You know, don't, don't be neat, don't try to get equal coverage everywhere. You know, just flick that on there. And then what we're going to do as well is flip it over the hands, turn it over the vine, just, just, you know, just Flick it on over the model like that. Because you know, when you're fighting something, blood doesn't just kind of neatly go where you want it to, it kind of goes you know, a little bit everywhere. A little bit down there, and then maybe I think just maybe a just a dab on these skulls here. Just take a tiny bit. There we go. And what we've got there is a decent tabletop model that would look quite nice just um, with the rest of a a big war band full of these guys, well, which is useful because that's what I've got, and it's a good solid tabletop standard. So what we've done as well is we've broken up all of the brown, just using the the whites and the reds, just to add a bit of colour and just make it look nice and interesting. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next time we're going to be looking at the nemesis of the Untamed Beasts. We're going to be looking at the Iron Golem. So we're going to be using some of the techniques that we used for the red armour from the Goliath for that warband as well. And in general, just having a little bit of fun. So a nice, easy, simple warband to paint. Okay, right, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And any comments, good or bad, I'd love to hear them below. All the best. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.